Leah stood at the entrance of Biotech headquarters, gazing up at the towering building, her heart a mix of emotions. She had worked here for 10 years, rising from an ordinary researcher to the youngest chief scientist in the company. Her research had made significant contributions to human health and had brought her fame. However, this building, once a symbol of glory and hope, had now become the source of her nightmares. Three months ago, a critical experiment led by Leah had a severe accident, resulting in the deaths of several test subjects. Despite her repeated assurances that all safety protocols were followed, the company's top management and the media blamed her entirely. She was labeled a cold-blooded scientist, becoming the focus of public outrage and even receiving death threats. Amid the public outcry, Leah was forced to leave biotech. Her life collapsed overnight. Friends and colleagues distanced themselves from her and her once proud achievements were obliterated. Desperate, Leah moved to the outskirts of the city, becoming one of society's shadows. The shadow society was the city's underbelly, inhabited by those forgotten or rejected by mainstream society. Most had lost their identities and statuses for various reasons and lived in poverty and danger. In the shadow society streets, Leah, like other shadows, wore tattered clothes and stayed hidden in the shadows. She was both frustrated and angry, determined to find a way to prove her innocence. One day, she arrived at a small community called Land of Freedom, a relatively safe area in the shadow society established by some like-minded individuals. It had basic housing, a makeshift clinic, and a small market. Leah hoped to find some useful information there. In one corner of the community, Leah spotted a familiar figure. It was Carl, a former technician at Biotech and an old friend. Carl had disappeared after the accident and Leah never expected to see him here. Carl, Leah called out excitedly. Carl turned around, clearly surprised to see Leah. Leah, what are you doing here? Long story, Leah hurried over to him. I need your help with something. Inside a small makeshift hut, Carl poured Leah some poor quality coffee and then sat her down. Leah recounted her ordeal, and Carl's expression grew serious. In a low voice, Carl said, I know you're innocent. The people at Biotech don't care about the safety of experiments. They only care about profits. I suspect that the accident was intentionally staged to cover up some secrets. Leah's eyes widened with a mix of shock and anger. You mean, it was a conspiracy? I've had my suspicions about that accident, Carl whispered. The top brass at Biotech have been conducting extremely dangerous and unethical experiments, but very few know the details. After the accident, I discovered some unusual traces before I could investigate further. I was forced to leave the company. Leah asked, Do you remember what those unusual traces were? Carl nodded. It was the genetic data of the test subjects. Those data indicated that some form of genetic modification was performed, but I couldn't determine the exact purpose. However, I know a place that might have more answers. Where? Leah asked anxiously. Biotech has a secret lab in the suburbs, codenamed Udun. It's where the company's most classified experiments are conducted. If we can infiltrate it, we should be able to find the evidence we need. Leah frowned. That's a dangerous place. We need to be fully prepared. We need more help and resources. After thinking for a moment, Carl said, I know some highly skilled hackers who are also outraged by biotech's illegal activities. I can contact them to see if they're willing to help. Us, Leah and Carl decided to join forces and began planning the infiltration of the Eden Lab, they gradually realized that this was not just a simple investigation, but a life and death battle against powerful forces. Leah and Carl gathered some volunteers from the Shadow Society and the hacker team Carl contacted. They set up a temporary base in an abandoned warehouse and started planning how to infiltrate Biotech's secret lab at Eden. The leader of the hacker team was a young woman named Natasha. Known for her exceptional skills and calm demeanor, she used to be a security system designer at Biotech and was familiar with the company's network architecture and security loopholes. The security system at the Udden lab is extremely tight. Natasha said in front of a large map, we need to bypass multiple layers of defenses, including biometric identification, real-time surveillance, and automated defense systems. However, I've identified a few potential vulnerabilities we can exploit to infiltrate. Carl studied the map carefully and asked, So, what's our plan of action? Natasha pointed to several spots on the map and explained in detail. First, we need to plant a Trojan in Biotech's network system, which will temporarily disable their surveillance systems. Then, we'll split into two teams. One team will enter the lab, and the other will provide technical support and cover from the outside. 
Leah asked, what equipment does the internal team need to carry? You need to bring a portable scanner, data collector, and a few vials of biological sample collection fluid. Natasha replied, the scanner will help you locate the target area. The data collector is for downloading experiment data, and the collection fluid is for preserving any biological samples you need to take. Over the next few days, the team conducted multiple dry runs to ensure everyone was familiar with their roles. The night before the operation, Leah and the other team members gathered in the warehouse for final preparations. Everyone, be careful, Leah said firmly. This operation is crucial for our future and our only chance to seek justice for the innocent victims. No matter what happens, we must see it through to the end. On the day of the operation, the hacker team successfully planted a Trojan virus through a cyber attack, temporarily disabling biotech surveillance system. Leah and Carl, part of the internal team, quickly approached the laboratory perimeter and infiltrated through an underground tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, a heavy metal door blocked their way. Carl took out a portable hacking device and connected it to the door lock system. A few minutes later, the lock was successfully cracked. Once inside the laboratory, Leah and Carl moved quickly according to the map, avoiding patrolling guards and surveillance cameras. They reached a large laboratory filled with advanced equipment and experimental materials. Quick, use the scanner to find the target area, Leah whispered. Carl activated the scanner and soon found a hidden door leading to a secret underground experimental area. They cautiously descended the stairs and were shocked by what they saw. Down scenes of glass incubation tanks containing various deformed organisms, clearly the products of genetic modification. Are these the test subjects? Leah murmured. Carl quickly operated the data collector to download the experiment data. Yes, these creatures are genetically modified humans used to test extreme gene editing techniques. Leah felt a wave of anger and sorrow. She quickly collected some samples with the specimen collection fluid and reviewed the experiment logs, discovering a larger conspiracy behind these experiments. We need to leave quickly, Carl said alertly. The surveillance system is about to come back online. As they prepared to leave, an alarm suddenly blared, and the entire lab began to seal the exits. Leah and Carl were forced into an emergency passage, hoping to find another way out. They ran through the passage with the sounds of pursuit and alarms echoing in their ears. Just as they were about to despair, Natasha's voice came through their earpieces. Hold on, I found an exit location. Keep going forward. Eventually, they managed to escape the laboratory, bringing crucial evidence back to their temporary base. Although the adventurer was fraught with danger, Leah and her team succeeded in obtaining important information, taking a significant step towards exposing biotech's conspiracy. Leah and Carl successfully brought back evidence from the Eden lab, and the entire team was exhilarated by the operation's success. However, they knew this was just a small step in revealing biotech's dark secrets. The real challenge was just beginning. At the temporary base, Leah and Natasha worked together to organize the experimental data and samples into usable evidence. After days of effort, they finally uncovered a series of shocking truths. Biotech was not only conducting illegal genetic modifications but also using people from the Shadow Society as test subjects for inhumane experiments. These data are enough to destroy biotech, Natasha said, but we need a platform to make this information public. Otherwise, biotech and the government will quickly cover everything up. Carl nodded in agreement. We need the help of the media, especially independent journalists who are willing to expose the truth. Through Leah's connections, they found a journalist named Victor. He was an investigative reporter with a strong sense of justice and courage, who had exposed numerous corporate and government scandals. Leah handed all the evidence to Victor and explained biotech's crimes in detail. Victor was shocked by the evidence and decided to fully support Leah in bringing the truth to light. However, just as they were preparing to release the report, biotech struck back. One night, the temporary base was suddenly attacked. Armed personnel stormed the base, attempting to retrieve the evidence and eliminate Leah and her team. Leah and her team quickly reacted, using the base's defense systems and makeshift weapons to fight back. In the intense firefight, Leah and Carl fought desperately to protect the evidence, knowing that this was not just about their survival but the fate of countless shadows. Natasha used her hacking skills to disrupt the attackers' communications and security systems, buying the team as much time as possible. We can't let them succeed, Leah shouted. Protect the evidence. Protect our future. After a fierce battle, 
Leah and her team managed to repel the attackers. However, the temporary base was compromised, and they had to quickly evacuate and find a new hideout. Victor decided to release the report immediately, spreading the truth rapidly through the internet and social media. The report caused a huge uproar in society. The public began questioning biotech and the government's actions, demanding a thorough investigation. Meanwhile, people in the shadow society started organizing themselves to voice their rights. However, biotech and the government were not willing to accept defeat. They began using all kinds of means to erase the evidence and eliminate Leah and her team. Leah and her team had to keep moving to avoid capture while continuing to gather more evidence and garner more support. As Leah, Kara, and Natasha's team endured continuous evasion and battles, they grew closer despite the numerous dangers they faced. They remained steadfast in exposing biotech's crimes. Victor's report had a huge impact on society, drawing more attention to the plight of the shadow society and calls for a thorough investigation into biotech and the government. Over time, more members of the Shadow Society joined Leah's team. Among them were doctors, engineers, teachers, and even former soldiers. These individuals, once abandoned by society for various reasons, now found new hope and purpose. Together, they organized a large resistance alliance, preparing to confront biotech and the government head-on. At a secret meeting of the alliance, Leah stood on a makeshift platform and addressed the shadows gathered before her. We were once abandoned by society, stripped of our dignity and rights by those in power. But now, we have a common goal, to reveal the truth and fight for the rights we deserve. Today, we are no longer shadows, we are warriors, and we will fight for a fair world for ourselves and our future children. The crowd erupted into thunderous applause and cheers. In the eyes of the shadows, there burned a flame of hope, and Andrew they had finally found their voice. Meanwhile, Victor's report continued to make waves, eliciting a strong public reaction. People took to the streets, demanding the government and biotech reveal the truth. A massive demonstration erupted in the city center, with ordinary citizens and shadows raising the banner of resistance together. Facing such enormous pressure, the government and biotech began to panic. They tried to control the media and block information to calm the situation. But the public's anger was unstoppable. A movement called Awakening quickly emerged, demanding a thorough investigation into biotech's crimes. The release of all illegally detained test subjects and the rights and protections the shadows deserved. In a secret operation, Lee's team successfully stole more confidential documents from biotech, exposing the corrupt dealings between the company and high-ranking government officials. These files not only further confirmed biotech's crimes, but also revealed the government's corruption and conspiracies. These documents are enough to bring down the entire government, Carl said excitedly. Leah nodded, yes, but we need a larger platform to make this information public. We have to reveal the truth at the perfect moment. That moment came soon enough at a national press conference. The government attempted to calm the public's anger by announcing a token investigation into biotech. However, Leah's team was prepared. They hacked into the live broadcast of the press conference, displaying all the evidence they had gathered to the entire nation. On the screen, biotech's crimes and the government's corruption were exposed one by one. Shocking the nation, viewers saw the genetically modified human test subjects, the pain and struggles of the shadows, and finally understood the truth. This is not just a victory for the shadows, Leah said, looking into the camera. This is a victory for all oppressed and disenfranchised people. We want a society of fairness and justice, a future without corruption and conspiracy. The nation erupted in unprecedented protests, demanding a thorough investigation into the government and biotech, and a complete reform of the social system. With public support, the shadows finally gained a voice and influence. After Leah's team exposed biotech and the government's crimes at the national press conference, social unrest reached its peak. The public's outrage and protests left the government and biotech with no place to hide, forcing them to respond. A week later, the government announced the formation of an independent investigation, committee to thoroughly investigate biotech and internal government corruption. However, Leah and her team knew that this alone would not guarantee justice. They decided to take further action to completely dismantle biotech's control system. With the support of the Shadow Society, Leah's team devised a bold plan they decided to storm biotech's headquarters, expose all hidden secrets, and publicly reveal the evidence on the spot. They garnered widespread support from the Shadow Society and the public, with many volunteers and citizens joining their ranks. 
On the day of the operation, Leah stood at the forefront of a massive crowd, made up of both shadows and ordinary citizens. Marching towards biotech headquarters, people held signs and chanted slogans, the entire city shaken by the sight. This is our moment. Leah shouted, today, we show those in power that they can no longer oppress us. The crowd moved forward with little resistance. The biotech guards were unprepared for a protest of this magnitude. As Leah and her team entered the building, they quickly took over the control room and began collecting and publicly releasing all hidden files and videos. In the top floor conference room, Leah, Kara, and Natasha faced biotech's top executives. These once arrogant figures now looked defeated, knowing they were about to face legal punishment and public condemnation. You can do this, the CEO of biotech shouted angrily. You're disrupting social order. Leah calmly replied, it's your actions that disrupted order. You use technology for inhumane experiments, stripping countless people of their dignity and lives. Now, it's time for you to pay the price. Carl uploaded all the evidence to the internet, ensuring the public could witness their actions in real time. As more secrets were unveiled, the crimes of biotech and the government officials became undeniably clear. Outside, thousands of citizens gathered in front of biotech headquarters, chanting for justice, their voices echoed throughout the city and reached every corner of the globe. The international community began to take notice, demanding trials for biotech and the involved government officials. In the end, biotech's top executives were arrested and corrupt government officials were brought to justice. A new interim government promised the real reforms, ensuring the rights and dignity of both the shadows and ordinary citizens. Society began moving towards fairness and justice. In this victory, Leah and her team not only cleared their names, but also won rights and dignity for the shadow society and all oppressed people. Leah stood atop the biotech building, looking out at the cheering crowd, filled with pride and emotion. We did it, Carl said softly, standing beside her. Yes, we did, Leah replied with a smile. This is not just our victory, but a victory for everyone who seeks justice and freedom. After this long and arduous struggle, Leah finally found her redemption. She not only reclaimed her innocence, but also brought hope and a future to countless innocent people. The shadow society was no longer forgotten. They became an integral part of the new society, working together to build a better and more just world.